Hey guys, Wolf of 1918 here, and today I'm wearing my service shirt instead of my typical tunic, as I'm going to be talking about a little known, but rather critical part of any impression, the helpsbindum, or neck stock, depending on who you talk to. This piece would wrap around the user's neck like so, and was used to prevent chafing, but more importantly, to protect the tunic that was worn by the user. Now, one of the reasons why this isn't very well known is mainly because it doesn't pop up in any sort of imagery online unless you really look for it. Um, this can be commonly seen when soldiers are basically not really wearing their tunics properly. Most soldiers would want to hide it as much as possible, and that was mainly just to really protect the uh, collar of their tunic from chafing, and the side effect would be their neck. A lot of people assume that the main purpose of the helpsbinda was to specifically protect the soldier's neck rather than the tunic, but this is incorrect. The actual reason for this being issued to troops was a little bit morbid, and that was to protect the tunic, which was an expensive item for the Germans to produce, from uh, getting ruined from too much use. Uh, as many tunics would actually go through multiple users before the war ended, and uh, so tunics would often outlive the soldier itself. The reason for this policy was to keep the war as cheap as possible. Soldiers are going to die, they're going to get injured, they're no longer going to be able to fight. And if the uniform can be kept in such a condition to where it can go through multiple soldiers, that cuts down the costs substantially. And even though a human life is definitely more valuable than a tunic, if you lose a person and every single time you lose a soldier you also lose that tunic because of damages done by use from that person, then your costs are going up higher than if you can keep the tunic intact. Now, that's what this helpsbindo was supposed to help prevent, would be chafing of the collar and eventually uh, destruction of said collar. Uh, the the helpsbindo would generally go right around here and sit like so. I actually have pictures of the 17th Reserve Infantry Regiment on leave or uh, near the front line, and you can make out the helpsbindo that they're wearing underneath their slightly unbuttoned tunics or just that they're wearing without their tunic. Uh, it was typically issued in most regiments that you would not remove these, although I also have pictures of members of the 17th wearing just their service shirt with no help spinda. So I, I also want to apologize in advance if I'm pronouncing the name wrong. I'm very bad at pronouncing these foreign words. Um, so let's go ahead and discuss basically how you're going to uh, put this on and how it I works. I apologize for the much closer angle now, but I do want to go ahead and show how this properly works. And as such, I am unable to do it when the camera is further away, so I had to bring it forward. Um, so here is the help spinda. Uh, this would go towards the front of the, um, would go on the front like so. And you have two uh, straps coming from either side. And on one side of the straps, you have this hole here. Tying this can be rather difficult and uh, is a little bit, uh, a little bit hard to manage at first, but you'll eventually get used to it. Now. How you're going to want to do this is you want to take it and wrap it around in a circle. You want both of these straps here to be um, inward on the inside. So they wrap around um, basically like so. So you basically do this and then this one here going around will pop into this hole here like so. The other one will remain on the inside of the um, helpsbinda, and then you'll basically just work your way to tightening it until you can fit a finger through so that it's not too tight against your neck. So this is almost tight enough. So right around there. I can fit two of my fingers through right at my Adam's apple. I don't really have a very big Adam's apple, so um, it's, it's good enough. And then you're going to want to tie it like you're tying your shoes. You'll basically go around. You'll do a basic knot like so. And then you'll do a small loop on one side and then on the other. You don't want to tie it too tight and you want to make sure you get it correct. If you don't get this correct, it might become impossible to take off without help from someone else. So if you're in a situation where you need, where this is actually 
uh, making it more difficult for you to breathe, that could end up very badly. Okay, you just want to tie it like you're tying a shoe. It doesn't need to be perfect. This knot will be hidden. It just needs to work. Yeah, see, and I screwed that one up. I mean, I don't usually wear this because they're kind of difficult to manage, and if you're not used to wearing them, they become pretty uncomfortable. One of the good things about these is that you don't need one that's like this excellent, perfect version. As long as they're around the same size, people aren't going to nag at you for having one that's cheaper. At least no one's nagged at me for having a cheaper one. In my experience, people have been pretty chill as long as you have one. As most reenactors, when they start out, they don't have these. They're uh, mainly because there's a lack of resources for new reenactors. So now that I have that, it's tied decently so that it won't just slip off. I can now stuff it under like so and just keep that whole knot hidden under there. So there's the next stock, and you'll basically use that right there to prevent the chafing. Now that you have this tied on, uh, you'll just basically adjust it to where it's not too uncomfortable. And I'm looking over here because that's where the camera's um, little screen is, so I'm just making sure it looks good. And this will help prevent chafing on your neck as a side effect, but it will also protect the collar of your uh, tunic. And more importantly, this is a very, very important piece to have to look accurate and to set yourself above and beyond new reenactors and people who are new to the hobby. This is something that is often overlooked and a lot of veteran reenactors, people who have been in the hobby for a very long time, like to harp on new reenactors if they don't have one and they really, really emphasize the necessity for having a help spend. A, if you don't want to spend a ton of money on one, you can get some pretty cheap ones, uh, but if you want to get a more accurate one that will probably be more comfortable for you and uh, just look better in general, you can go to other websites and again, links to all these places will be in the description to help you get the proper one for your uh, impression and you can make the des decision on cheap versus uh, the better ones for you. I have a cheap one and I should probably invest in a better quality one, but uh, a lot of the more high quality ones just aren't available right now due to everything going on in the world kind of s putting a halt to uh, transportation and uh, logistics. Now that I actually have this on, I might as well put on my tunic here. Uh, let me remove this real quick. So the sound's going to get worse, but it'll be better in the long run. So um, you're basically going to take your tunic and put it on like you normally would. And just button it up. The other good thing that the help spinda actually does is it hides the white uh, service shirt that you'll be wearing, and so it makes you slightly less visible. Now I say that wearing an M1907 uh, model tunic, which is not exactly the most uh, camouflaged tunic you can have. It's got the red piping and the golden buttons, so that small amount isn't going to suddenly give you away versus wearing this tunic. Um, but yeah, so as you can see, you can clearly see the help spinda underneath the tunic, even when I have this clasp on, um, and it's visible. And reenactors who know their stuff are going to see that. And if you're new to the hobby and you have a help spinda with a decent uniform, you're going to gain a lot more respect from the older people in the hobby. And you're going to set yourself above and beyond and make people um, really appreciate the effort that you're putting into the hobby itself. I, I hope this uh, this tutorial has been helpful. I know the camera angles have probably not been the best. I'm working on uh, on making sure that these tutorials, the camera angles work right. Um, this has been part of the reenactment week sort of deal where I'm going through all these tutorials and so that on Saturday when I release my video for basically how you can um, have the best and most accurate, like so that on Saturday when I release my video on actually wearing your uniform and putting it on, uh, a lot of this stuff's already covered so that I don't have to make the video too long and all these uh, all these different smaller videos will be referenced with putting on the house pinda and and all that good stuff. So uh, a little side note is underneath this, generally you'd wear suspenders to support your trousers. Unfortunately, my suspenders broke recently. Uh, this was mainly due to them just being cheap, so I don't have suspenders at the moment.
uh, unfortunately. I'm working on getting new stuff to replace some of the things that have broke over the recent months due to moving and just poor maintenance and them just being cheaper items in general. So um, they won't be available for the upcoming video, but uh, the video won't really deal with the undershirt and the tunic and trousers. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys wanna keep up with me and uh, check out other projects I'm working on, you can join the Discord or check out my Instagram linked in the description below. Down there, you'll also find links to my Teespring shop and to my Patreon if you wanna support what I'm doing. Uh, I appreciate you guys. Uh, thank you very much.